the place you have entered today in the unit number three is 15 pages. Okay, it's going to be the last part of your first term examination. Understood? Yes, sir. If you complete these 15 pages, okay, knowledge wise, you are getting the capability of sitting for the first term examination. So it is the situation. These days I have given you SC practices and there are other practices waiting for you. So after completing all those practices, inshallah, there are plenty of first term exam papers to be given to you. So one by one by one, I will give you the first term exam papers. You have to do. I will give you the mark schemes. You have to correct it. That kind of a procedure will be going on. So in that case, I am really glad to tell you, you have completed majority of the components required for the first term examination. Okay. Sometimes. You might think just now only we have entered the A levels. If answer is speaking about the first term examination, you have not entered the A level just now. You did your O levels in May, June onwards, you have entered your A levels, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. So now, now it is eight months. Now it is eight months. So, eight months is a time of good enough time to complete the what is it? Uh, first term level. Eight months, if we have not completed the first term level, then what kind it is? I don't know. So, here I have completed the lesson. Now, I am getting ready to give you the first term examination. So, it's last part is 15 pages we are going to discuss. This is the beginning part what you studied in your grade 10 unit number 30. All these ones were there. Little, little were there. Here, little more there. That's all the difference. Here the lesson we are going to speak about, although it's called hierarchy of taxa of scientific basis, it is just a classification, grouping organisms, okay? Grouping organisms, arranging organisms into groups on the basis of common characteristics, okay? Hereafter, when you go in deep, you will get to know what are those common characteristics, okay? We are doing grouping. Now, Nidaria is a group you studied. Analida is a group you study. Analida mean Analida animals have certain common features among them. Leech is an idarian. Earthworm is sorry, leech is an analyte. Earthworm is also an analyte. Leech, earthworm share so many common characters. Both of their bodies are segmented. Segmented worms there. Both of their bodies have coelom, body cavity. Both of them have complete closed circulatory system. Like this, we can go forward, go on listing many common characteristics between earthworm and leech. That's why earthworm and leech are in the same group called analida. It is correct to any scientific grouping. If you go for any scientific grouping, there you will notice a 
common set of common characteristics there. So according to the common characteristics, we group the organism. We arrange the organisms into groups. And that is called by the name classification. So here we are going to study about classification. Complete classification. Unit 3 mean complete classification. Are you clear regarding the definition of classification? Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. The classification. Okay. There is a this is a study area. This is a study area. What is the name of this area? Taxonomy. 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 Uh, the term taxonomy, the study area is called taxonomy. It was introduced by a person called Ernest Haeckel. Ernst Haeckel introduced the term taxonomy. So within the taxonomy, four events are included. Classification of organisms. Scientific study on classification of organisms. If you are doing a classification, it is a part of taxonomy. Identification of organism is also taxonomy's one division. Nomenclature of organisms. In your O level, you studied binomial nomenclature. Can you remember? Yes, yes sir. Uh, that is also a part of taxonomy. taxonomy. And description. Describing a group of organisms. So, describing an organism is also coming under taxonomy. Like this, taxonomy subdivisions are how many? Four. Four. So, what are the things we do in the taxonomy? We classification. Do classification of organisms. Identification, identification of organisms. Nomenclature of organisms description. and description of organisms. Okay. And another one thing. Suppose if you are asked another one more. Five if you ask. Placing the groups in groups of organisms in the hierarchical sequence. It is also a part of taxonomy. Now, hierarchical groups of organisms, you already studied sequence. Can you remember? Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Can you remember? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yes, that sir. is the hierarchical sequence. Understood? So yes, placing sir. the groups of organisms in hierarchical sequence is also one part of the taxonomy. In exam paper, catching these things, they can place you questions. Okay. Now we come to the uh, well known heading. There are two types of classification. What are the two types of classification? Artificial, classific Artificial classification and natural classification. Okay. Artificial classification. Who does artificial classification? Human or nature? Humans. Natural classification? Nature. No. Both are done by human. Understood? Yes, sir. Nature doesn't have any 
classification. Nature has only organism. Artificial classification is done by human. Natural classification is also done by human. It is human who categorized his classification in certain places as artificial classification and in certain places as, what is it? Natural, Natural classification. Actually, the basic difference between artificial classification and natural classification. Why one is called artificial classification? Why one is called natural classification? Mean in performing artificial classification, we don't consider evolutionary relationships of organisms. What doesn't you consider? Evolution. You don't consider evolutionary relationships. That means if you make a group in natural classification, we expect evolutionarily Closer organisms need to stay together. Understood? What is the yes, expectation sir. in natural classification? Evolutionary. Evolutionarily, closer organisms need to stay in the same yes. group. If the organisms are not evolutionarily related, they should stay in different groups. Different groups. In artificial classification, that will not happen. Okay? Most of the artificial classifications are based on external features, habitat, and economical importances. Most of the artificial classifications are that way. For a simple example, in 1996, I think 1996 or 1994, I'm not pretty sure about it. 1994, I think. One in, in sorry, in the zoologic exam paper 1994 zoology exam paper there was one question which one of the following are which one of the following are evolutionarily related which one of the following are what is it Evolutionarily related. I can't remember all the answers. It's a very old question. One statement says, okay, earthworm, I just type this one, earthworm and snake. Okay. Another answer was given. Hookworm and tape, sorry, hookworm and tapeworm. Hookworm and what is it? Tapeworm. Tape. The third answer was given tortoise and what is it? Elephant. I can't remember the fourth answer and what is it? Fifth answer because it is 1994, my A level paper. Understood? Yes. My A level paper, almost very old paper. But that is not the thing. I want to just give you an idea what I'm trying. 
in this case okay most children selected the second answer most children selected the what is it second so, answer yeah. telling thinking uh, both the worm no correct understood uh, both the worm cocoa tape one tape both are worm. So worm and worm are evolutionary closer. Examiner told answer is the third one, which is the answer. Third. Tortoise and elephant. You might ask why. If I will just simply tell you. Earthworm belongs to phylum Annelida and snake belongs to phylum Chordata. Understood? Yes, sir. So they are in different phylum. They are in what is it? Different phylum, but both are them. Both of them are in the same kingdom. Both of them are in the what is it? Same kingdom. Same kingdom. Animalia. Same kingdom. Okay. If you take hookworm, this is just an example. You are not going to copy or anything. Just I am giving. Just I am giving an idea. You have to understand, no? That's why I am giving this idea. Okay. Second one given, cookworm. Cookworm belongs to phylum. Phylum. Nematoda. You have you don't have much idea about the phylum, but is it? Nematoda from your previous grades, you don't have that idea. But in this grade, inshallah, you will get to know a full idea about uh, I have got the rest of the answers. It is C, anemone, and C, cucumber. C, anemone, and what is it? C, cucumber. Finally, butterfly. And back. Okay. So if you take tapeworm, tapeworm belongs to phylum. What is it? Platical minthus. Understood? So are they in the same phylum? No. 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 So Tortoise is in the phylum. What is it? Chordata. Chordata. Elephant is also in the phylum. Chordata. Chordata. P. Anemon is in the phylum Nidaria. You know Nidaria, right? That yes. word is C. Cucumber is in the phylum echino what is it Dermata. and butterfly is in the phylum arthropoda okay and bat is in the phylum codeta so among these who are evolutionarily closer Tortoise and elephant. Tortoise and elephant. Tortoise and elephant. But most of the children didn't select, what is it? Third answer. Tortoise and elephant uh, telling, what is it? Uh, tortoise looks something different. Elephant looks something different. 
the way they look different if you we look only the external appearance and decide uh, they are different that is what kind of classification Artificial classification. Artificial classification. Now these people have taken butterfly and bat as a combination. On what basis they would have? Now there are so many animals there. Why they have selected a butterfly and bat? There should be a reason, no? Artificial classification. So both are flying, correct? Understood. Yes, sir. Yes. Both yes, are sir. what's it? Flying. Flying. So both are flying. Is it enough to tell they belong to the same group? Both no, are sir. flying. Is no. it enough to tell they are in this? They are evolutionarily closer. No, sir. No. If you take the second example, both have, both are sea animals. Correct. Yes, sir. So, habitat they are considering. So, considering a habitat, if you do a classification, that is also artificial, artificial. classification. Okay? If you take the uh, third one, okay? A legless a worm, legless body, that is considered. Otherwise, they don't need to put Earthworm and snake together, no? Correct? So yes. here, it is worm-like body. Body is looking like worm. Because body is looking like worm, is it enough to tell they are evolutionarily closer? No, sir. Okay? In the physical morphology, tortoise and elephant don't show any near resemblance from outside. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But they are more closer than any one of these ones here. So, considering the evolutionary relationship, if we are grouping, we will not group butterfly and bat together. We will not group earthworm and snake together. Though looking different, we will group tortoise and elephant together. Understood? Yes. yes. So, you have to understand the difference is working in exam paper. Already they have asked that question in the past paper. Okay. Already they have asked those questions in the past paper. When you come across the past papers, uh, practices, don't buy any past papers. I have told you already, don't buy any. What is it? Past papers. Past papers. All the relevant contents, inshallah, I will give you. Take my materials, practice it. Please do one thing. Do my work on time and please complete them on time. You are mature children. Okay. I can't handle you like I handle the small ones. Okay. That's why after giving the essay even, I don't ask anything. I don't ask anything. So if when you send me the answers, I give you the scheme. That is my level. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, some of you are my old students. So, you know, in those places, how I'm an adamant person. Correct? Yes. Sir. But Rifan, sir, is not adamant here. Why? Okay. Tolu kumela varandita mahanam tolanta. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. When you were in one grade, the way I treated you, in the same way, I can't treat you here. Okay. That is not nice for you as well for me. 
so it is your responsibility if you do it i will give you the second next support next next papers are waiting next next papers plenty of works are waiting only one thing you if you are delaying the works i am also just keeping calm because you have to decide yours not me hope you understood it right so are you clear regarding the basis of artificial classification and natural classification yes sir yes so if you are group making a group call flying animals then what will happen bats will come to that butterflies right insects will come to that birds will come to that okay among them rather than flying will there be any evolutionary near relationships no sir no understood understood yes sir yes sir so if you are thinking legless animals some legless animals you can collect but evolutionarily they will not be close right so you have to understand in past paper they are asking what are the basic difference between home and home artificial classification and natural classification. natural classification the main difference is in natural classification we consider we consider evolutionary evolutionary relationships in artificial classification we don't consider evolutionary relationships. evolutionary relationships understood right yes, yes. now little more detail about the artificial classification if you consider artificial classification according to our convenience according to our convenience we develop certain groups and place the organisms in it okay for an example now look at this example what kind of plants ornamental so that has an economical importance right yes, yes. Uh, another kind of plants medicinal plant medicinal, medicinal. Plant. that's also having a what is it economical, economical importance. importance third type of plants poisonous plants uh, they also have an economical important Import. definitely there are poisonous plants can be used to make some uh, chemicals a mosquito repellents like okay insecticide chemicals like things you can make business even cereals here i want to tell you one thing when you categorize a plant as ornamental plant all the plants that are visually attractive will be coming to that correct or not yes sir so yes. which one is which group is this plant which group is that plant this is dicot monocot angiosperm or gymnosperm do we consider no 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 we don't care about whether dicot or monocot dicot plant monocot plant angiosperm gymnosperm seed making seed not making uh, vascular a vascular nothing beautiful okay ornamental that's no idea no correct so like this yes sir if you, yes, sir. If you take every one of them okay that particular Character, what we are looking for. If it is there, 
So whether other things are different or not, we put them in one group. Understood? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm. Here, that is easy. Yes, sir. Actual, yeah, Buddha. You spoke with me? Uh, sir, what are cereal plants? Cereals mean puta, the grains yes, we are what, eating. What is a cereal plant? Wait, wait. This, the grains we are eating, rice is a cereal. Okay, sir. Wheat is a cereal. Kurakkan is a cereal. Okay. So, cereals are the food items. Green gram is a cereal. Okay, cowpea is a cereal. Okay, mainly the plants, seeds we consume as a food. Okay, Clear? Right. If you are yes, eating sir, plants, you. seed as a food, all of them are coming under, what is it? Cereal. Right. Okay. Cereal. Cereals. So, right. Now, if you, now in this one, they are telling, now second, first thing is okay. So first thing, do you understand? Uh, doing artificial classification is easy. Okay. Doing artificial classification is easy. If you select a criteria, in that criteria, what are the organisms they are put them together so doing artificial classification is easy convenient and second in artificial classification we don't consider evolutionary uh, relationships third one is third one is very important it is telling you Artificial classification was the only system used before which century? Which century? 18th century. 18th century. So what's 18th century? So what's the speciality in the 18th century? Why suddenly people started natural classification in 18th century? Before 18th century. Before 18th century, they had only artificial classification. After 18th century only, they started, what is it? Natural classification. What could be the reason? Reason is, simple reason, on the 18th century, The concept of evolution introduced. We studied no Lamarck, Darwin. The concept of evolution was introduced in which century? 18th. 18th century. So before 18th century, people didn't have any knowledge about evolution. evolution. In that case, can they think in the point of view of evolution? No. No, no sir. So, after a evolutionary ideas were introduced, they started thinking of the evolutionary natural basis. Classes. Then natural classification started. Finally, artificial classification is easy to use. Easy to expand also. If you want another group, you put another group. Vegetables. Understood? If you want another group, you can just put yes, another sir. group. Ornamental plant, medicinal plant, poisonous plant. Mean, what is it? If you have an idea, now you can put another group. So adding another group is easy. Okay. Now, in schools, students are divided according into classes. Correct? Yes, yes or no? Yes. 
is it a systematic is it a systematic natural classification or artificial classification artificial artificial if they want they will put another class correct yes sir ah, they yes, want sir. they will just add a class another more, one more class okay do they think uh, these children are more talented they have to be in one class and should be trained more these children are average students then they should be placed in this kind of group and they should be trained in this manner these children are slow learners so they should be trained in this manner that kind of idea is there eh in no, sir. no every child is taught in the same manner whether you like or not that is your problem whether you understood or not that is not a problem so slow learners will not easily capture ideas they should be taught very patiently little by little so for them also we are teaching in the same pattern correct so what kind of classification yes. it is what uh, really remember that cannot be done in the schools okay that i told cannot be done easily in the schools if you classify one group of children as slow learners then parents will come come for the fight understood there's no any parent ready to accept that their child is a slow learner that is a separate problem right so if you consider evolutionary relationships true relationships okay if they see they are saying represent evolutionary relationship based on what is it phylogeny evolutionary history the correct relationship now you know one thing last class you asked a question at me how human evolved correct yes sir i gave an idea and went now i told in that one i told you human is an ape am i right can you remember yes, i told yes so there are many apes in this world now also living chimpanzee is one ape gorilla is another what is it ape ape like this there are many apes living in this world my point is this among these apes evolutionarily more closer to human is chimpanzee understood yes yes okay there are many others gorilla there orangutan there chimpanzee there many others are there but who is more closer to human chimpanzee chimpanzee if you ask why the reason they say is in gorilla when it comes to the leadership now you want to give leadership to a person say an og okay gorilla will be selecting always younger organisms for their leadership leadership okay old ones are kept apart kept aside you stay you you are now retired you stay in your place we will take care of it leadership is always given to whom yeah. youngsters that is whose pattern gorilla gorilla pattern but chimpanzee does the other way chimpanzee always gives leadership to 
experienced elder members of the group. Same thing human also does, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. It's true. Youngsters are more energetic, but elders are more experienced. So, in that character, chimpanzee shows a closer relationship with human. That way they argue. Mm -hmm. That way they argue. The so point it is, this kind of phylogeny, evolutionary relationships are correctly, closely observed to determine whether a group and one group, one group of organism and other group of organism uh, are near to each other and whether they can be placed in the same group. Understood? Understood? Yes, sir. Right. In this case, it is totally other side to artificial classification. It came to the light after 18th century with the introduction of evolution. evolution. Okay. Here we consider many deep characters, deep characters to determine whether an organism is same in same group or different group. Right? In that case, adding one group is not that easy because you have to do a bigger research and create a new group just according to your convenience, putting from your pocket. Can you group add another group there like your school divides? No, sir. No. no. Are you clear? Yes. yes sir. Okay. With the improvement of technology, the characteristics based also improved in the natural classification. In the beginning, they used what kind of characters? Morphological characters. Morphological characters. Appearance, additional legless, flying, wings, feathers. Uh, scales, correct? Uh, body shape, those types of characters in the beginning they considered. When the knowledge improved, they went for Anatom which characters? Anatomical. Anatomical characters. They went through the body, notice the lungs. Okay, this is a lung breathing animal. Now, teachers teach us uh, snakes are lung breathing. Yes or no? Teachers, teachers, snakes are lung breathing. Correct. Have your teachers taught you? Snakes are lung breathing. Hmm? Tell me. Yes. Snakes are lung breathing. You know. We, have, you, have you seen the lung of a snake in your life? No. 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 no because one teacher told us we accepted it. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. But if you really have cut a snake and seen its lungs, like us, it also has how many lungs? Two lungs. Two lungs. One lung only functioning. One functioning lung will be there. Other one is a shrunk one, a putty tube-like part. And that one lung, functioning lung is very, very long. Okay. It's a very different lung. So like this, every animal was cut. Its inner organs were noticed. Okay, 
then making a classification that type of classification is called classification based on the anatomical feature okay, okay. no no classification based on the what is it Anatomical, anatomical features. features okay i will tell you a simple idea how this anatomical feature is important you know panda do you know panda yes okay till there are so many people uh, call panda is a bear do you have that mindset people say panda bear panda is a bear even scientists looking at its external morphology concluded panda is a what is it a bear a bear later when they examined the skull of panda okay they took the what is it skull of panda the skull of panda when they examined the skull of panda the skull of panda was very closer to the animal groups called what is it raccoons raccoons the skull of panda was not resembling bears bears the skull of panda was resembling raccoons raccoons so scientist after deciding uh, it is not a bear it is a raccoon okay they even altered the scientific name of it understood yes yes earlier the scientific name was given to the meaning it is a bear later scientific name was altered to the name of what is it a raccoon see the raccoon you will notice the resemblance of panda here yes or no yes 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 so compared to a morphological feature when you go for anatomical feature you will notice more closeness there clear yes sir your yes. ideas will change later we improved further microscopes were microscopes were invented invented cells were observed mainly after electron microscopes were invented we had a very close look on the cells mitochondria chloroplast nucleus that level we went in and those ones gave us further improvement to divide the organisms in the cell level okay do you know the kingdom protista yes sir yes yes sir but there's one thing you don't know once upon a time protista was a group limited for whom microorganism that means any microorganism whatever the microorganism bacteria stays in what protista, protista. microorganism no virus stayed in protista fungi stayed in protista protista whatever the microorganism they are all of them were what is it protista protista 
after cytological knowledge these people found bacteria has prokaryotic organization others have eukaryotic organization cytologically bacteria and protista cannot stay together so quickly they developed another group for bacteria called what is it kingdom monera and all the bacteria were placed there now see a cytological improvement remove the bacteria from protista and place it in a separate kingdom understood yes sir if this cytological improvement was not there what would happen till bacteria will be inside the protista so cytological features last one is home molecular biological molecular biological features we are looking at the dna sequences rna base sequences and do the classification okay here before you would have heard about two words one it is bacteria other one is what is it okay okay bacteria they are morphology if you consider see they are anatomy anatomy means a cell in single cell ones single cell one so there's nothing called anatomy there they are cytologically also what is it same same so when i was studying a levels in 1992 to 1994 our teachers taught us bacteria rk bacteria both a what is it kingdom monera that's what they told us but now after dna research they told not even in one kingdom they can't even stay in one domain okay bacteria is a separate domain called domain bacteria and archaea is a separate domain called domain archaea they have divided it understood so biological idea molecular biological idea separated bacteria and archaea bacteria and kept them in separate domains in future further advances can come more and more advance coming more and more classification will be perfect even this can be wrong once upon a time bacteria archaea bacteria stayed together that's how we studied in our a levels but your a levels are different if you go for another uh, 30 40 years there will be another a level with a different criteria correct yes sir so this way what are the characteristics considered under natural classification morphological anatomic cytological actually these four words you studied in your grade 10 also morphological anatomical cytological molecular biological those things you studied there also but meaninglessly children study those things that actually too much for the grade 10 that is something different okay so according to the natural classification plants are divided into various groups Uh, they have written bryophyta lycophyta terophyta cycadophyta caniforophyta anthophyta animals are divided into several phyla nidaria practical means nematoda annelida arthropoda echidermata mollusca chordata those things 
so these things are not so important at the moment this is what you are going to study throughout the entire lesson clear throughout the entire lesson this is what you are going to study no need to memorize these things sir clear no please go through the introduction portion and tell me whether everything is clear with you sir i have a doubt yes uh, sir so when we compare the molecular biological characteristics we do we get a more like accurate of course product? of course of course why not okay sir Okay. Accuracy increases. That's what I want to tell. You. Don't type and waste your time. Just open the microphone and ask. Clear? Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh. Go through it and tell me whether these things are clear completely. Sometimes it can be a short note can come in the A-level paper. Write a short note on natural classification. Write a short note on artificial classification. That kind of questions can come to you. Clear, yes, sir. Okay. Thereafter, we are going for a putty history. Okay. History of what is it? Classification. In the world, the first man who did a scientific classification of organisms, that honor goes to whom? Aristotle. Aristotle. Yeah. You know, Aristotle was a man very old. Okay, very old. Aristotle lived around. Uh, in 300 odd BCs, okay? Aristotle 350 BC or something he lived. So very old time, very ancient time. But very talented man, actually. To that time, he was a very talented man, understood? When the people were not having any scientific knowledge, this man had a bigger knowledge in every area. So according to him, he divided the organisms into two. Okay, what are the two organisms? Plants and animals. Plants and animals. Plantae animalia. They are language. Okay. Plantae animalia, his language. So anyway, plants. He could notice these are plants. These are animals. Animals. Okay. Further, Aristotle had a very good interest on the animals than Plants. So Aristotle did a further classification on the animals. Okay. Mode of locomotion. Flying animals. 
walking animals creeping animals swimming animals that kind of classification understood yes sir yes, reproduction sir. egg laying ones giving birth to young that kind of classification presence and absence of red blood your book is telling red blood cells Actually, there's no possibility him to observe the red blood cells. R B C he could not observe. To observe R B C, you need a microscope, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that was invented by Anton van Leeuwenhoek in eighteen hundreds. Our anatomy now only. So, do you think there was a microscope during the time time of Aristotle? No, sir. No. So, will he be would would he be having a knowledge uh, regarding red blood cell? No, 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 sir. What he had it is red blood is coming. No red blood is there. Understood? Yes, sir. So, yes. From this point of view, okay, red blood is due to red blood cell. Uh, colorless blood is absence of red blood cell. That idea now we can tell, but Aristotle didn't tell. What is it? Red blood cell. He actually told red blood. But anyway, I told you in the beginning of the class one some days ago. Engal kitta or naya kati Sri Lankan syllabus le pune. எழுதுறவங்களுக்குலி You might think, sir, doctor is a fool. But our intelligence is something different from knowledge. Do you think all the knowledge people are intelligent? No, sir. No. Sir. No. All the people who are uneducated are not intelligent. No, sir. No. There are so many people. They were. not properly educated but they are very intelligent intelligent think the other way there are so many people who are well educated but not intelligent intelligent okay now for example now in sri lanka against muslims when there was ethnical okay Everness created. Okay, one thing they told Muslims are adding. Okay, family planning pills to kottu roti and distributing to the Sinhalese to control their population. And allow ke kottu roti le family planning pills port. Avangal vada pandra the that. அவங்களோட ரீப்ரொடக்ஷனை குறைக்கிற அளவுக்கு ஒரு புத்தி இருந்தா அவன் எதுக்காக கடையில உட்கார்ந்து கொத்து போடுறான் so if a common man accepts it that is reasonable correct common man whatever the thing told in the television they will accept okay but a doctor thinking that way doctors thinking that dr shafi is would have done this mean okay vada kottu vada bra in sri lanka the point it is here 
and educated one also will be foolish. Beyond the level they can't think. Although he is a doctor, he can be a number one doctor in Sri Lanka. Okay. But he is also in his fundamental modea. Understood? Yes, sir. So, in such a country, we have no way to argue with the people. If they have written in the book, what are the criteria used by Aristotle? Okay. A mode of locomotion, reproduction, presence or absence of red blood cells, right? Take the marks and go. Don't write like I have written, don't put the cells in the bracket. Clear? Yes, sir. After Aristotle, another person, actually they say, Theophratus is a pupil of Aristotle. I don't know how much that is a Im very important point for this uh, history. Knowing Theophratus is a pupil of Aristotle. Okay, thank God they have not introduced the teacher of Aristotle. So, Arist uh, Theophratus, they can introduce Theophratus as a single individual. No need to be Aristotle's pupil. What kind of importance it has, I don't know. He was very much interested in botany, plants. So he did a classification on plants. plants. One according to their size, habit means size actually. Trees, shrubs, herbs. Second, he did a classification according to their lifespan. Okay, if the plant is living within one year, annual. Within two years, biennials. May, okay, more than two years, perennials, that way. So some kind of contribution those people did. Anyway, Aristotle's classification is artificial. Theophrastus classification is also, what is artificial. it? Artificial. Okay, all these happened before Christ, BC, 300 B.C., very long ago. Okay? The third man you have been introduced is whom? Carlos Linus. Carlos Linus, very famous name, correct? Yes. Very famous name. Right. Carlos Linus, he belongs to the Anadomina. He belongs to the 18th century. A little earlier to evolutionary theories. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. He was a botanist. So his attempts were on basically on the plants. But he did very nice works there. Those nice works still applicable. That is the interesting part. He introduced the hierarchical order of taxa. That means you study a hierarchical order. No, you study. You studied. Correct? Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, a genus, what is it? Species. Species. In this one, at that moment, he had a set of taxa already. What were the taxa that was available in his time? Domain. Okay, we can't say that he introduced them, but they were available in his time. What were the ones? Species was there, genus was there, order was there, class was there. So, he brought them to an order, hierarchy, from the lowest level to, what is it, highest, highest level, 
Okay, taking these four criteria, he did classification of 6,000 plants. 6,000 plants, they are species, they are genus, they are order, they are class, he organized. Clear? Not just he was introducing those names, he did the classification of the plants considering species, genus, order and class. That time, uh, family Texan was not there. Phylum Texan was not there. Domain was not there. And he gets the honor. He is the man who introduced the Texan called, what is it? Kingdom. He is the man who introduced the Texan called, what is it? Kingdom. Kingdom. Kingdom was introduced by whom? Kingdom was introduced by whom? Texan kingdom was introduced by whom? Carlos Linus. Carlos Linus. He divided the plants and animals. Aristotle just told plant and animals no he told it is yes, kingdom sir. plante kingdom animalia okay aristotle just told plants animals but this man was telling us kingdom plante and what is it kingdom animalia kingdom animalia that is another thing he did. Okay, another thing we all know him very much for his binomial nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature. When he was doing the classification of how many plants? 6,000 6, plants. He was considering number of stamens in the plant, flower, and number of, what is it? Style, style. that style mean you can think the gynaceum spot, you know that one, correct? Stigma yes, style sir. ovary. Okay. So, only considering number of stamens, number of styles, he has done this classification then what type of classification it would be? Artificial yeah, classification. It's also artificial classification. Anyway, other than that artificial classification, all what he did were useful things. Still, we apply. Still, we have the hierarchy. Still, the hierarchy starts in the, sub, the species, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Still, we are using binomial nomenclature. What he introduced. That's why this man is called by the name father of modern biology. Understood? Yes, sir. Aristotle get the honor, father of biology. Aristotle gets the honor, father of biology. Linnaeus gets the honor, father of modern biology. Yes, Nada. Any question? Uh, yes, sir. So this person didn't introduce the hierarchical order. He just used it, right? He, the, the, this is the thing. The texts were there. Understood? Okay. Yes, sir. The texts were there, but the order was not there. Uh, okay, sir. Thanks. Understood. Almost like what happened, uh, not a good comparison, but just what happened to Quran. Correct? Yes, sir. So, Quran was there in materials so people have memorized it. It was in use 
in here and there it was it and finally due after prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam after his this this okay this mice during the time of uh, khalifa abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu anhu under the guidance of umar radhiyallahu anhu quran was compiled to the material what we have now that was not there with the time of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam like that contents were there but putting them in the correct order organizing that was done by whom that is so hierarchical order belongs to whom carlos linus carlos linus clear yes sir yes we later little by little little by little improved it with our knowledge okay now he has introduced the kingdom if kingdom is coming kingdom would come after the class correct am i right this is genus order class then kingdom am i right yes sir hmm. yes sir they are after we are coming to another person whose name is what is it ernest is is really ernest hackel ernest hackel this man okay hackel he gave a very good contribution to biology okay one thing he was the man okay who gave a group to the microorganisms called what is it protista protista so protista was perceived by ernest ernest e is not there okay e is not there e e r n s t ernst hekel a german zoologist he was a german what is it zoologist okay he noticed there are microorganisms anton van leeuwen who gave the world the knowledge of what is it microorganism microorganism where to place the microorganism where is the place for the microorganism then he decided okay let's place the microorganism in a separate group what is it protista mm. they are after another thing he did he is the man who introduced the new taxon called phylum phylum now the hierarchy was further extended understood with the phylum introduction the hierarchy is coming species correct genus order class phylum kingdom this way what happened it was extended 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 later another person introduced family his name is peary no don't write these things eh naan summa knowledge ga solradhu knowledge ga solra edhaiyum eludikolla koodadhu understood peary magnol he is the man he was a botanist and he is the man who introduced what is it family family it was further improved and it was staying with how many how many pieces order here coming what is it how many taxa now check it seven seven 
at the moment the present one has eight texa last texa is domain we are coming to that okay right are you clear regarding ernst haeckel yes sir yeah next yes, it is sir. who it is robert Whitaker, a famous name, a man who did a uh, five kingdom classification, right? Thing it is, when Robert Whitaker, okay, Robert, before Robert Whitaker, the world invented home. Electron microscope. Electron microscope. People. Oh, that means the scientist, not the common man. The scientists got to know there are what kind of organization? Prokaryotic organization. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic. eukaryotic cellular organization. At that time, what have happened is one man, one man, his name is also not in the syllabus, whose name is, what is it? Copeland, he removed the prokaryotic organisms and developed a kingdom called Kingdom Monera. Who introduced the Kingdom Monera? Herbert oh. Copeland. Herbert Copeland introduced the Kingdom Monera. Monera. So, Including Kingdom Monera, now there were four kingdoms. Already Kingdom Animalia, Kingdom Plantae were there from whom? Kingdom Aristotle. Uh, no, no. Aristotle didn't tell Aristotle. Kingdom Plant Kingdom Plantae, Kingdom Animalia. Who was? Carlos Linnaeus. And later who? came to the point, Fortista, that's from Ernest Haeckel. Ernest Haeckel. And finally, Copeland was introducing Monera. Monera, Monera. and there was a four kingdom classification. classification in that situation. Okay. Robert Whittaker was coming to work to introduce the five kingdom classification. What is the fifth kingdom? Fungi. Fungi. But point it is, in your syllabus, in your syllabus, is there anything written about Herbert Copeland? Yes, no. No. So some, sometimes, if they ask you, okay, who introduced kingdom monera mean, Though it is, it is a fault information, you have to write whom? Robert Whittaker. Robert Whittaker. Understood? Yes, yes, sir. Similarly, in exam paper, if they, I ask you, what are the kingdoms introduced by Robert Whittaker mean? You can write fungi. You can write, what is it? Monera. Monera also. Because these people are directly jumping from Ernst Haeckel to Robert Whittaker. Copeland part is missing. But missing part, we can't include and improve the idea on Akuta. If we try to do that one, sometimes in the exam papers, there can be confusion. Understood? Yes, sir. So we are not teaching here for just knowledge or something. We are moving towards a goal. Our target is uh, sitting a wonderful examination. Okay, right or wrong, that is the truth. Right. So that is one thing. So this is one thing you mentioned to you in the book. 
what are the criteria considered by Robert Whittaker to do his five kingdom classification? What are the criteria? What are the criteria? Cellular organization. Cellular organization means putta, whether it is prokaryotic or eukaryotic. 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 That is the one we call cellular Cellulo. organization. Second one, unicellular or multicellular, whether the organism is unicellular or what is it? Multicellular. Multicellular. This one has been questioned in an old past paper in 2005. What were the criteria considered by Robert Whittaker for the classification? In that answer, they wrote, what is it? Cellular arrangement. Cellular organization and mode of mutation. mutation. This way they wrote it. So the point I have given in the bracket that is not in the book. Which one? Cellular arrangement. Uh, that don't go and write that one. I have placed that one when you sometimes go through the past paper, when you notice the word cellular arrangement, you should be able to identify this is meaning unicellular and multicellular. Clear? Yes. yes. For that purpose, I have placed it in the brackets, not for you to memorize that part and write in the exam. If you write that one in the exam, you will not get marks. If you write unicellular or multicellular, you will get marks. Clear? Yes. Good. Finally, the man, uh, who is it? Carl Uzi. Carl Uzi. Okay, an American. Recently, in 2012, only he died. Okay, he himself and Robert Whittaker are close friends and work together. The real name is Carl Richard Uzi, an American microbiologist. An American, what is it? Microbiologist. Microbiologist. This man gave a very different concept. That's the reality. If you just come with small differences, the world will not easily accept you. If you want to show this, show that you are unique, you have to come with what? Bigger changes. Then the world will accept you. That's what Carl Uze did. Okay? He introduced the, he is very famous for his three domain classification. He is very famous for, what is it? Three domain classification. Three domain. The Texan called domain was introduced by him. He introduced the three domain classification, what it was not there to that moment. That, as I told you, when I was in 1992 to 1994, we were not given the idea something they are called, what is it? Do me. Our classification started at kingdom. You are starting in the domain. Sometimes your children or their children will start in another place. Who knows? So, in his classification, in his classification, he went deep to which level? Molecular, molecular biological methods. Okay. In the molecular biology, he is a microbiologist. His main concern was they are on the home. Prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. Okay. Prokaryotes, when he deeply studied about 
they are dna rna proteins like molecular concepts he noticed there is a separate domain called what is it archaea which is totally different from what is it bacteria bacteria okay so these two concepts were considered by him okay you are close to an organism by its dna is the major evolutionary closeness correct yes sir yes sir you are that's the closeness the so other than skull is same appearance is same cells are same no your dna is a same mean that is the maximum closeness of what evolutionary uh, relationship okay so darwin's theory was given another dimension darwin was telling evolution is right but even darwin didn't think that human will get into this level to prove that darwin theory is correct okay one it is darwin theory was accepted by the world second it is unitary origin of life unitary origin of life mean okay all the organisms all the organisms start in a common single cell okay we all started in one point or okay unitary origin unitary origin of life mean all the organism start is a you know it's called unitary theory of life understood yes sir okay yes. okay from a single point all the organisms evolved that kind of a theory okay so it is also accepted why you know why you know now you have studied in your o levels one person's one organism's dna can be transferred to another person's dna correct yes. you know that one uh, genes can be transferred so now say you take a dna from a plant of dna from an animal now they have taken the gene of some cuttlefish okay whose gene cuttlefish. cuttlefish in cold oceans this cuttlefish in cold oceans has a gene to tolerate that coldness okay during the uh winter season okay from this one they have picked a what is it gene and they have inserted that gene inside a what is it strawberry strawberry, strawberry plant purpose it is e strawberry mainly grows in the cold countries correct yes sir it yes, sir. will withstand the coldness and stay fresh understood yes sir yes point it is there is a gene in the cuttlefish correct that gene is making a protein that gene is making a what is it protein Sorry. that protein is giving the withstanding ability correct yes sir when the gene goes to the okay strawberry when the gene goes to the strawberry in strawberry also it should produce the same protein am i right yes sir yes sir then only strawberry will withstand the cold cold understood yes sir yes sir. that mean 
the if now strawberry is a plant a different kingdom right animal is a different kingdom but they have a commonness their dna is a working same understood yes sir yes sir okay that's why strawberry plant can accept the cuttlefish gene and strawberry plant can produce the protein re relevant to the cuttlefish gene and get the beneficial character what we are accepting expecting otherwise can't right otherwise can't right yes sir the yes, point sir. it is dna is a common heredity material okay to all living organism okay that mean and further okay dna sequence is common to all living what is it organism organisms for example if a sequence called u t c is a is called a codon how do you call it codon it's a codon a dna codon uh, not u t c sorry a t c P is okay. That's a codon called. What is it? P is. So I mean, Baba, in the DNA, next coming three nine nucleotides. One has thymine, other one has adenine, other one has what is it? Cytosine. Uh, cytosine. This codon, if it is there. it is representing which amino acid methionine methionine in human also it is methionine in plants also it is methionine in bacteria also it is methionine in fungus also it is what methionine methionine in cuttlefish also it is methionine in strawberry also it is methionine if cuttlefish has methionine and strawberry has another amino acid for this codon what would happen will the same protein made no sir no if the same protein is not made as we expect will cuttlefish withstanding ability come to the strawberry no sir no, no. Sir. so we all share no. the same genetic code my summary is this my summary is this all the organisms in the world share the what is it same genetic same, same genetic code okay this same genetic code tells us we have originated from a single point understood yes sir otherwise otherwise a back so remember bacteria is also one relative of us somewhere uh, bacteria's grandfather and our grandfather are same so same genetic code tells us we were originated from a single point and that tells us we had a what kind of origin we had a unitary, unitary. origin unitary origin so this is the way to understand the unitary origin actually a little deep concept okay for you to understand in this manner i told you this idea okay are you clear yes sir right now dna matching in even in the unitary origin we go for dna matching and that was an improvement in the technology molecular biological concept gradually it was able to separate uh, archaea and eukarya from each other 
Understood? Archaea and bacteria from each other. Archaea stands as a group between whom and whom? Bacteria and eukarya. Bacteria and eukarya. Actually, in evolution, other than being a prokaryote, in, mark this point and keep it here. Yeah? In evolution, other than being a prokaryote, archaea is very closer to eukarya molecular biologically. Understood? So the other finish. Allahumma rabba khadidu. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. So, I have completed uh, the history. <laughs> Remember, in this history, only MCQ or structure questions can come. Don't memorize the total content line by line equal to an essay. Understood? Okay, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So please go through this and tell me whether everything is clear. Okay, now these parts even are they clear now? These are okay. You can understand that one. Please go through and tell me whether you are clear. Are the ears important? Ah, no. Okay, sir.
these people just copy paste here and there we have to memorize everything <laughs> and second thing they are not asking okay that's i told you even don't try to develop this one to a level of what is it yes yes i mean line to line how to capture no and you follow my short question series if the short question series every important questions will be included if you practice my short question series mcq structure will be completely covered remember short question series is covering the direct content okay uh, some tricky contents will be there expecting a student to think understood that's the difference going to be a uh, intelligent one and non intelligent one right anyway we also will think in that manner maximum we will place those kind of questions also with our experience okay i am being in since 2003 no in the edwards level biology stream so 20 years no right so with that ex uh, experience we will be correctly placing it but anyway that will be polishing you uh, that side uh, mcq structures mini structure areas are uh, fully supported by the short question this says you have to practice are you clear yes sir okay so inshallah we will continue this in tomorrow's class okay we'll meet jazakallah khair assalam alaikum